In this video, I'm going to talk about the different skull shapes that we find in the fossil record and the anomaly with Cro-Magnon man, um, one of our ancestors according to the to Stan Gucci's hybrid origin theory. So pretty much every skull of every primate, apart from Cro-Magnon, have several features that have been there for millions of years and have, hadn't changed even all the way up to Neanderthal, which was you know the ones the ones that we we talk about in Europe are from about thirty five thousand years ago. So the first feature is the recessive chin. So you'll find that every fossil out of Africa has a recessive chin. That is that the chin is cut back. So there is no jutting forward chin. This is something that we only find with humans and with Cro-Magnon. The second feature is the supraorbital ridge, the, the prominent brow ridge, which is another feature that we see in all of the African skulls and the skulls from the Far East and the skulls from Europe. This again is something that has been there for millions of years. So we don't find one skull without it. It's almost like a, it's almost a way of, of determining whether a skull is part of the lineage of what they would call out, the out of Africa theory. Um, and that is that they always have a, a prominent brow ridge. The third feature is the sloping forehead. So humans have most most humans have a, an upright forehead um the african skulls including up to neanderthal have a sloped forehead and again it's a feature that every skull has you can pretty much tell skulls from the out of africa the out of africa lineage um, by the sloped forehead now the fourth feature is the large eye sockets. So large eye sockets indicate a nocturnal creature. In comparison with say Cro-Magnon who had very small eye sockets in these in the skulls so all of the primates to have come from the african line all appear to have been nocturnal or at least majority nocturnal so they may have been you know diurnal as well but judging by the size of the of the eye sockets they they're they're nocturnal and then the Last feature is the uh, occipital bun. So at the back of the head, somewhere around the base here, of the skull is a large protrusion, which is called an occipital bun. And this again is something that we can see in all of the fossils to come from Africa, all the way up to Neanderthal. 35,000 years ago. The reason I'm pointing out these features is because um, 
we have to appreciate that nature is is very expedient. Nature doesn't waste any energy on anything. Nature doesn't waste um, nature doesn't waste time or space uh, creating features that aren't useful. So every one of these features I've mentioned plays has some use in the behavior of these creatures the creatures that have them as we can see with the bony crest on the top of a buffalo's head or with the antlers of a deer they all play an important part in that animal's life so usually associated with competition for mates or territory um, and the line of evolution out of Africa shows that all of these features continued all the way through every change in the fossil record, these features persist. So therefore, whatever they were, whatever, whatever role they play in the life of the, of the species must have been so important that nature didn't didn't change them you know I, I, I say nature I, I'm you know I'm not literally talking about a woman called nature I'm talking about the the streamlining processes of evolution that will hack away at a, at a species until it's um until it is the prime agent in its environment so something like a shark so a shark um, reached the pinnacle of its uh, streamlining process millions of years ago hundreds of millions of years ago because they haven't really changed all you've got is is a few a few small changes to the sharks but um, mainly they're a very effective predator and there's not really been any need to change that for millions of years because it just works um, and this can this could be said the same thing could be said for the for the fossils in the african record is that they just they worked the recessive chin the large eye sockets super orbital ridge sloped forehead occipital bun all these features worked. We see we see all these features in the earliest fossils in the record. We see all these features in the the last fossils in the record, the Neanderthal man. And these are juxtaposed with what we find in Cro-Magnon. So the idea that Cro-Magnon came out of the African fossil record seems ridiculous when you consider all of those features that have been there for millions of years and then Cro-Magnon turns up with his pointed chin, his straight forehead, small eye sockets um, and the back of his head pushed in, um, you know, as well as, as well as all the other morphological features of his skeleton. So yeah, there's um, reasons to doubt the out of Africa theory and um, support for the hybrid origin theory.